The next concept we're going to talk about is curvature. And first I'm going to show you what curvature is, and then we'll describe kind of how we're going to compute it. So um, curvature in words is um, roughly going to be how quickly does a curve bend? By bend, I mean curve. But how quickly does a curve curve would be kind of silly to say. And then this is easier to see in a picture. Um, if we kind of have a curve like this, that's one R of T, versus a curve like this, that's another R of T, then we would say that this has low curvature, and this right here has high curvature. This curve is bending very slowly. This curve right here is bending very quickly, kind of almost in a complete circle over a very short period of time. And then somehow this is related to how the tangent vector changes. So remember, the direction we're going is kind of indicated by the derivative of the tangent vector. Derivatives mean change, so maybe that could connect with you. But if we draw a picture, sort of maybe on this side of the curve, the tangent vector is going that way. And on that side of the curve, it's going that way. And when we think about how much it's bending, we're thinking about how much that little red line changed. Compared to here, the tangent vector was going kind of that way, and then it's going that way. Again, we're thinking about how much the direction changed, and it changed much more over that period right there. So it's related to that, but then it's also related to as the length changes. So sort of if we want to think about how quickly the tangent vector is changing, we need to have some frame of reference. And our frame of reference is going to be that we're thinking about over this period. How much did the tangent vector change? I'm not even going to try to highlight over that. Versus over this period. So that's kind of for us the um, quote, time we're thinking about, the period over which we measure change is however long it takes to travel over some section of your curve. And we want to know how much your, your curve bent as you traveled that section of curve. And so the steps to calculate this are going to be a little complicated. So first what we need to do is we need to parameterize our normal expression of our curve R of t in terms of arc length, which we denoted by s. And the steps to that are going to be that you compute s of t using that arbitrary equation we had when we learned about arc length. And then that'll be s of t equal to some stuff that includes t in it. And then solve for whatever t is from that equation that involves some s in it. And then you go back to your r of t and replace T with S in R of T. 
to get r of s. So you're just going to take that equation for t, plug it in everywhere you see t in r to get something that got rid of time and instead depends on arc length. The reason for that is because I want to know how much my tangent changes with respect to arc length. So then I'm going to compute t of s, which is just going to be the derivative of r of s. And then the curvature, try to make that a really good r right there so you can tell it's not a v. Curvature, C-U-R-V-A-T-U-R-E, is denoted by kappa. And I'm interested in t as it changes with arc length. So the derivative of t of s with respect to s. And I just want to know the size of that. And I'll write it in this form too, because I know that prime notation can sometimes disguise what derivatives we're taking if we just change variables. So I'm going to take the derivative of t with respect to s. That just made more of a mess of it. And then that's how I'm going to find curvature. So we'll go ahead and do an example like this next.